today I'm going to post a variety of videos and keys, um, mostly videos I think, that will provide you an opportunity to uh, check the work that was due prior to today, um, as well as build some new stuff moving forward. Please remember all the things that we've done prior to today and today will be quizzable on Friday, which is our next class. First, we're going to take a moment to uh, check your data sheet. Um, you should have already completed both sides of the data sheet and um, actually up there, I think maybe 14 is what you're supposed to complete on the data sheet and you're supposed to have built your acceleration versus net force graph prior to this. Um, secondly, we'll do a, we'll pause on that data sheet and write up a full mathematical analysis and then come back and answer the final questions on that data sheet. Um, next. Uh, using the process we used in the lab, you guys are going to complete the uh, Newton's Second Law uh, Part 2 post-lab check, which I passed out in class the other day, and there's a hard copy posted to the assignment here today. If you don't have a printer, please feel free to put it out, uh, put it, all your answers on a sheet of loose leaf. Um, we'll also learn how to calculate percent error. Please remember as we go through the, any of the videos today that you can pause them and replay things as needed. I'm intentionally gonna go quick just to keep the videos shorter. And again, remember all of your lab materials for part two should be complete and ready to be submitted on Friday at the beginning of class. We will have a quiz over part two of this lab looking at the relationship between acceleration and net force for a system whose mass remains constant on Friday. So let's get rolling. So um, just busting through the just busting through the data sheet. Uh, you should have put your prediction. We said as the net force acting on the system increases while the mass of the system remains the same, then the acceleration would, and you should have put down your uh, guess. What are we changing? We're changing the net force, and how are we doing that? We're adding mass to the hanger. What are we measuring after each trial? The rate of acceleration, we're finding that from the slope of the velocity versus time graph from the N2 smart pulley program. And what are we keeping constant? Uh, we're not changing the mass of the system. It's really important to understand that how did, how did we go about doing that? Well, we know that we had a track and there was a pulley on the end of the track and the cart was on the track and it's got the wheels, and we're pretending that the track is frictionless. Um, and attached to the top of the cart, we had a string, which we're supposed to pretend is massless, and the hanger. Just to remember, how did we keep the mass of the system but increasing the net force? Well, to increase the net force, we had to increase the weight of the hanger, right? The net force is the weight of the hanger. Um, I wish I could type this quicker. Let's see. Uh, F, G, hanger, earth, and maybe make that smaller. Maybe that'll be a quicker way to do this. So the weight of the hanger is actually our net force. So to, do, to increase the net force, we had to increase the mass of the, of the hanger, but we had to do so without changing the mass of the system. So do you remember what we did? How did we put more masses here without changing, without adding mass to the system? Well, what you guys figured out that we needed to do was we put four 20 gram masses in the cart beforehand. And so they were already in our cart string hanger system when we ran our first set of trials. And after finding the acceleration after those, we took one of those masses, we took one of the masses off the cart and we took it and we placed it on the hanger, which increased the net force, but the mass of the system remained the same. We ran three trials, took another mass off the cart, added it to the hanger, and so on. So let's keep cranking. So you should have calculated your net force in this column using the gravitational field strength constant on the Earth, 9.81 newtons per kilogram, times the mass of the hanger, and you had to use the mass of the hanger in kilograms. Then you should have added your three accelerations you collected add those up, hit equals, divide by three to find your average acceleration. Um, and down below, how did we calculate the net force on the system? As we stated earlier, you've got the net force is literally the weight of the hanger. So you do 9.81 newtons per kilogram times whatever the mass of your hanger was. And that kept changing after every three trials. How did we find the mass of the system? 
well, do you remember what we put the cart string and hanger on with, along with the extra masses? We placed the cart string, hanger, and extra masses on the triple beam balance and we masked it. Something that I'd really look out for here is make sure that you say that you masked it. Do not use the term weigh it because we're trying to find the mass, not the weight. And as you guys know, mass and weight are not the same things. How did we keep uh, what did you keep constant in the experiment? We did not change the mass of the system. And how did we do that? By including all the masses in the system beforehand. Um, and how did we find the acceleration of the system? We used the N2 smart pulley program. We used that to build a velocity versus time graph and the slope of the velocity versus time graph gave us the acceleration. We then took the three accelerations from the similar net forces um, and then found the average of those, add them up equals divide by three. Heading off to side two, we were supposed to then sketch out a graph with our acceleration and net force. Because our net force was our independent variable thing we were changing, it goes on the x-axis and the acceleration goes on the y-axis. And we found out that we had a nice positive constant slope with a y-intercept that was zero over here. So we know that that's directly proportional, right? And next up they ask, what was the slope of your acceleration versus net force graph? Well, I'm going to pretend for my values that the slope was 3. And your slope should have been somewhere around there, maybe 3.1, 3.2, maybe 2.9. And what units would go with that? Well, if it's rise of a run, we would have meters per second squared with the acceleration divided by newtons down here. So the units end up being meters per second squared per newton. Well, that's a crazy unit. We've never seen that before. Something that's brand new today is we need to define what a newton is. And a newton is the amount of net force required to get a one kilogram mass to change its acceleration by one meter per second squared. Again, a newton is the amount of net force required to get a one kilogram mass to change its acceleration by one meter per second squared. So we can actually replace the newtons here on the bottom with kilograms times meters per second squared. And so that's what we'll do. Now we've got, we replace newtons with kilograms times meters per second squared on the bottom. We already had meters per second squared on the top. And what cancels out here? Meters per second squared cancel out. So now we have units of one over kilograms for the units. So number 13 asks for the units. I'm gonna include both of those meters per second squared per newton, which we now have done some uh, unit derivation and we end up with one over kilograms, our unit analysis. Uh, what is the meaning of this slope? Well, if we take the units off the bottom, right, taking a look at the units on the bottom, for every one newton of net force, the acceleration increases by three meters per second squared. At this point, it's, we're asked to find what does the slope represent. Now, the slope has to represent something that was held constant in the experiment. At this point, it's going to be a good idea to pause the video and go through the mathematical analysis video, and then we'll come back and finish this up in just a little bit. So I'm going to hit pause on this video or stop this video and we'll do a mathematical analysis. If you haven't done so already, you should grab a sheet of loose leaf and transition over to the mathematical analysis video.